Hello TypeScript TV fans, my name is Benny and today I will show you how you can attach Chrome's DevTools to your Node.js application. For this particular reason I prepared a sample code. It's not much, these uh, few lines here. And what I will do first is I will show you what it does. To do that I need to compile it because it's TypeScript code. So I execute npx tsc to hit the TypeScript compiler. It will then compile my TypeScript code to JavaScript. Now I have JavaScript code. If I go to the this directory, I can see my demo.js that just has been compiled and I can start it with node and then slash demo, no, slash dist slash demo dot js. And my code is fairly simple. It just goes to an API, gets the time, and prints the time here. Now I want to debug it. How can I debug it? There are several ways, and the one that I will show you involves the Chrome DevTools. How can this be done? Fairly simple. Now that I have JavaScript code, I can run it with Node. So I will execute Node. Then I will give it an argument, dash dash inspect. And then I will point it to my compiled code, which is this demo JS. And what you see here is that there is a debugger now listening on the host 127.0.0.1 and port 9229. What can I do with this information? Let's remember the IP and the port. And then I will check my Google Chrome. And there is a website called Chrome inspect and here you can see already that it um, has a list for remote targets and there's the ip address 107001 and it found actually a target to debug and if i click here on inspect then i see that it locks actually the console statements that i'm printing from my code so that's quite cool but how is this configured if i go back to the Chrome DevTools, then I can configure here the IP address and the port. And by default, it's 127.0.0.1. So the local host, local interface, and then port 9229. I can also change this. So let's stop the debugging at this point. If I want to select a custom port, I just type node and then again inspect. And now I pass it the uh, host that I want to use. I will use my local interface again. I can also set it to all zeros, so 0, .0, 0.0.0.0, but then I will open up my debugging port to the public internet. And this can be very dangerous because then everyone from the World Wide Web can connect to my computer. And this is something that I may not want because there can be bad people. So <laughs> please use the local interface and really um, be sure what you're entering here. You can now also put a custom port. I will this time use 9200. And then again, I need to point Node to my JavaScript code because Node cannot work with TypeScript code by default. So let's use the compiled version of my code, which was demo.js. Now I see that the debugger is listening on port 9200. So if I go back to Chrome, there will be no remote target because of course I need to configure it first. I can have Chrome listening to multiple ports. So I can have it listening to the default port, but also to my custom port, which was 9200. If I click on done, it um, will take some seconds for Chrome to pick that up but now it found the target and I can then use the inspect here to open the Chrome DevTools. What is so cool about it is that I have now all the possibilities that um, are familiar to me from Chrome DevTools. For example, on Windows, I can press now Control and O, which gives me a list of uh, my complete code. And thanks to the source maps from TypeScript, I can now jump to the TypeScript sources. So when I click on demo.ts, I will actually see my TypeScript source code, which is super nice. So thank you very much, inventors of source maps. You are great people.
The next thing I want to do is setting a breakpoint. I can do that by just clicking on a line number and then I see that my code immediately stops. So I can now inspect the things that uh, were here. For example, the time. I can see now the time object in its current state when the code paused. And if I hover over the time object, I will also see the properties. So here we see that it's an object with two properties. I can inspect them and everything works as it would work for debugging casual web applications. Let's remove the breakpoint because I want to show you some more features. I will just do a right click here and remove all of them and then we will continue. There's also an alternative to setting the breakpoints from the Chrome DevTools. I can, of course, set also breakpoints within my code. For this particular reason, I just have to go into my code and use the debugger keyword. And because I have a change in my TypeScript code, I need to recompile it, which means I need to execute npx and then tc again to hit my TypeScript compiler. And then in a bit, we will see the updated JavaScript code. Just to make sure, I will open the code here and see, yeah, that there is my debugging statement. So that's great. Now I can execute node again with the inspect flag. So from my um, history here, from my uh, terminal history, I still have node dash dash inspect, and then I run my JavaScript code with it. Now I can see that the code is continuing, which in this case means that the debugger statement isn't stopping my code execution. And that has a reason, of course, because as you can see here, Node is still waiting for a debugger. Yeah, you see um, the line here, debugger listening on something, something. So Node is waiting for a debugger to be attached. So I need to attach a debugger first before then the code will stop at this line here. We know how to do that actually. We just go back to Chrome inspect and then we can click here on this target and we will see now that the code stops here. And the debugger paused, which means that if I go back to my Node.js code, it's also stopping. And you can see here that uh, the debugger was attached that uh, happened when I opened the remote target from Chrome. And to have my code continuing, I need to unpause the debugging. So I just press then the resume button and then it will do one more iteration and stop again at this breakpoint. Another cool utility is the debugger, which is built inside of Node. It's not a full-fledged debugger, but it can also do things like stopping on breakpoints and continuing. And um, if I check again here this um, node inspect command, here we used inspect as a flag, but if we don't use it as a flag, but um, directly after the node command, then we will hook up the um, node inspector. And you see now that there's also now debugging functionality and my code um, stopped and I can have um, the next iteration or have it resume by entering continue. So C-O-N-T, that's the short version here in this uh, debugger utility. If I enter that, then my code continues and stops again here at this debugger statement. If I do one more continue, then uh, we see that here the time is being locked and um, I can continue again to have one more iteration. So that's quite cool. With Control and C, I can jump out of this debugger. Using Nodes debugger is really helpful when you don't want to leave the terminal. So if you just want to stay here in the CLI, then that's an alternative way to work. For developers with very big applications, it is uh, good to know that you can also run the debugger with a stop right from the start. So if your application has a huge initialization and is doing quite some intensive stuff, then you can, for example, let me just remove the debugging statement here, run the inspect, but with the addition of BRK, which means break. So what will happen now is Node will launch, it will listen for a debugger, but it will also stop your application and wait for you to resume. So 
to showcase that, I will compile my code again because I just removed the debugger statement here from the TypeScript code. So I need to recompile and then I will start node with inspect brk. That takes a while now, but once it's there, I can go to Chrome and um, just to verify, you see here that there is no console statement. Yeah, there is no line that is being printed, although it's here written in my code. So that already gives me a hint that my code is stopped. And if I inspect uh, it, then I see that here the debugger is paused. So I really need to click on resume in order to have my code running and logging again. The last trick for this video is dedicated to all TypeScript users. As you have seen, I always compiled my code first and then I ran Node because Node needs uh, JavaScript code. But if you use TS Node, then uh, you can have an easier life. So with TS Node, you can do the following. You can start the Node process with uh, the inspect flag. Then you require a module that is preloaded before your code. And in this case, I will make use of the module that TS Node provides so I can register TS Node. And then I will point it directly to my TypeScript code. So I will point it to my source code and then the demo TS file. This way, TS Node is um, taking over and uh, will compile my code to JavaScript behind the scenes. To show you that I haven't cheated, I will change my console log statement. We'll add some TypeScript here in front and uh, execute this line again without running npx tsc. And what you see now is that it has the updated code. I hope you find this video useful. If it was useful for you, then please uh, leave us a like. And um, if you want to hear more from us and learn more about TypeScript, just follow along the TypeScript TV channel on YouTube.